Okay. Um, I guess you can hear me. I don't know whether you can understand me because I left my voice at the airport, okay? So if there are any difficulties, just ask. Um, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, okay. So I have the pleasure and the honor, actually, to, to give an introduction talk or to, to share the introduction together with Trent, who has worked so many years on, on planetary GIS stuff. Um, and I appreciate, really, the effort that uh, these guys are putting into this um, overall endeavor and in, 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 into this workshop in particular. And I'm, I'm very delighted to see that there are so many attendees um, joining this workshop. And this is really great to have such an active community. Um, for an, I was thinking about what, what is an introduction to planetary GIS. So I could start with some data sets or something like that, but that's quite boring, I guess. So um, I, I, I really start with some basics and all that, what brings us together is actually the, um, some, some attraction to data. We want to use data, we want to integrate data, we want to analyze data and visualize it. And, and, and this is what drives us and this is, um, well, for some people, some kind of perversion maybe, but this is actually what, what, what makes it. Um, and um, the, the, the common denominator actually is that we have a spatial reference that we want to work with. Um, and most of you probably know this, this word already, saying that the 80% of all data contains a geographical reference. And that has been said in 1992. Um, but the world has changed since then. There was GPS and other things, and, and uh, mobile phones for the consumer market came up at that time, a bit earlier maybe, but uh, around that time at least. Um, and everybody has a GPS and with a smartphone. So um, recently there was somebody else was asked, um, and he estimates, and this he is Hamilton, he estimates that 95% of all data contains a geographical reference. So who is Hamilton? I don't know, actually. I'm sorry. But um, OK, he works. He's a GIS program director um, in a College of William and Mary. And where the heck is that? That's in Williamsburg, Virginia. I had to look it up. So I don't, I don't know whether this is representative, but that's the most recent statement um, in, in this respect. And I would add, actually, for planetary um, science, I would say that 99% of all data have a spatial reference or a geographical reference because they are actually um, using, a, using an inherent spatio-temporal reference frame to record all the data. And the, re the remaining 1% is probably the data that's got lost from Viking and Apollo and other stuff maybe. But I guess all the data has, has a spatial reference or have a spatial reference. But um, maybe, so this is the question mark, think about it um, and maybe we can discuss. So, then I looked at the, at the attendees for this, this workshop and thought, okay, what, what's the community actually? What's the, the active community that um, uh, we're dealing with? Um, and I made some, some lists. It's okay, there are data collectors, just people who are trying to get data from everywhere, trying to integrate it into a GIS because they have fun doing this and seeing data in, in, in context. Um, there are experimenters, um, uh, not in terms of instrument developers, but in terms of Let's try something new. Uh, okay, there's the GIS, there's a new GIS flavor on the market. Let's try to, to see how our data um, gets into this the new system, for example. There are thematic mappers, geologic mappers, mappers who do geomorphologic maps, for example, or landing site maps. There are landing site engineers with a different background, maybe. Um, there are classical map makers and cartographers working really in the classical style of cartography. Um, there are developers who are actually working on all these areas. There are data managers and there are spatial data analysts. So if we sort all those, all those activities, then I hope you, you find yourself in these, um, in these, uh, under these terms. If we sort it a bit, so we have, we have one part that's the data integrator and one other part is the data manager who ne really needs to not just include the data, but really needs to update data, delete old data, update metadata, labels, and so on. Um, keep an archive complete and consistent. Um, and there's this, this mapper part here, um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the mapping part, and the anal analysis part. And now, if we apply um, a, a concept, which is called IMAP, 
and this is exactly that what what GIS is all about. It's about input, it's about management, it's about analysis, and it's about presentation or visualization. And that's pr this principle has been called IMAP. Most of you know this already. But the most important is actually that this community sitting in this room right now is actually representing that principle. And this is good, this is representative. Um, and it's, it's, it's um, very good that we are working together here. So, and this IMAP principle is actually um, is the basic definition for GIS. We are not talking about a, a mapping system or something like that, or just an analysis system. It's all about data integration, management, visualization, and analysis. The combination of all that, that makes planetary GIS, you would call it a PGIS, um, an integrated system. Um, so if you go back in time a bit to see how, how things have developed, uh, in particular in, in, in comparison to, to terrestrial efforts. So there was this, most of you all know this already, um, there was this map by Jon Snow. Jon Snow is not the one from Game of Thrones, but another one, uh, a bit earlier actually, um, who was a physician who worked in, um, was a doctor working on, uh, in, in the one of, uh, I think it was the second or third uh, epidemia of cholera in London. And, um, um, he, he made his, uh, well, it's, it's sad, it's, alleged, it's first spatial analysis of getting to the source of this cholera uh, epidemia in, in, that, um, in that area of London. So he used visualiza visualization techniques and analysis, he used T's and polygons to do this, um, which is still used today in, 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 in GIS-based analysis. So in, in 1962, there was the first GIS developed in, in Canada, in Ottawa, um, <coughs> which already deals with integration management and analysis, with a different topic though. And in planetary sciences, that was five years after Sputnik, so we didn't have much data. Um, Viking, uh, not Viking, sorry, Mariner 2 made his first flyby to Venus, so there was nothing we could really uh, use at that time. Um, in the 1980s, there was the first in the commercial GIS on the market, um, at that time, Viking orbiters, both orbiters got sh um, shut down. Um, and the data volume was about 50,000 images, one megapixel images. Uh, so it was a Vidicon system, but if you digitize it, you end up with a megapixel size image. Um, okay, and, and then it started actually that there came up some need to, so to integrate all the data to see in comparison. And, and well, I started actually in 19, I don't know, 99 and um, quite late. And it was also already a pain to get uh, an idea of how things um, line up in a spatial context, to be honest. And, and, and uh, because we were not using GIS technology at that time. So in 1994, that was the earliest reference I could find. There was the first conceptual studies for planetary GIS. Um, um, for use in planetary sciences by Cook. Um, some of you might know him. He worked with Peter Mutter, I guess, at that time. Uh, 1999, there was uh, first mentioning of planetary GIS um, done by Trent, actually, the, um, the well-known PIGWOT system. Um, and it started with the data service to community. We could freely download planetary data and work with this. So that was the fun. And everybody had fun integrating new data. And I guess Trent had fun experimenting with new systems and also with the new online systems. Um, <clears throat> so, okay. And in 2003, there came some um, basic GIS-based analysis, with publications actually, so this is what I'm referring to here. New GIS flavors enter the market with the JMAR system, for example. And 2006, um, around that time, uh, um, it might be a year earlier or later or so, the NASA used GIS planetary geologic mapping program um, allowed to, 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 to or um, encouraged to provide data in GIS-ready formats. Okay, um, 2010 was the year of collaborative GIS developments, so everything started with new web GIS flavors, collaborative GIS all in the, in the same direction, like, like uh, well, community-driven efforts. Okay, and recently, um, some new developments came on the market. Vesta Trek is a nice system. 
and, and uh, GIS systems for, for moons and for other small bodies um, uh, and information systems. So if we line that up, I would say, I, I don't know whether it's true, but that's just a suggestion, so everything is, um, is, is just discussion. Um, I would say there's an experimental phase since 1995 in planetary GIS uh, developments. There is maybe a productivity phase since 2005, since users are actively working with GIS uh, and sharing research results. And there's a new development phase coming up since uh, 2010, dealing uh, with new GIS developments. So if I go back in, into literature and in the terrestrial side, um, I. I just listed the occurrence of, of the word geographic information system in, in some peer-reviewed uh, literature, not in conference abstracts or so. So we end up here um, with, with an increasing number, okay, that's, that's quite clear actually, um, and it doubles every six years about, okay? So how does this look like in planetary science? It's not as well presentative, I have to say, because I just picked journals that have a clear planetary focus only, because it simply was a bit easier actually to extract that just for journals. But this exercise can easily be repeated. Um, so 1999, first mentioning 2002, and it goes up. And um, we have this, um, I said 2005 could be um, the start of this productivity phase, more or less, and there's a new impulse in 2010 actually in terms of this development phase. I would love to, to integrate more, um, more papers into the statistics because it's quite weak actually at this moment. But this is the, the overall trend. Um, there have been some special issues here and there and this is why we have some, some, some gaps. Okay, um, oh there's some overlap, sorry. Uh, yeah, great, uh, so this is excellent, sorry. Um, if I look at, in, uh, at this community and if I look at uh, um, what, what you are working with and what your presentations are, lightning talks and, and regular talks, I would say that, that mapping, mapping and creating maps and cartography is about, um, oh, I, I forgot, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> um, well, estimate yourself about around 80%, okay? And the rest is, is, uh, is, is shared among landing site, um, engineering studies, spatial analysis and modeling and other, and other work. So there's in the main focus on mapping and on, on, on creating maps. <coughs> um, and about the difference actually between mapping and creating maps and everything, uh, Trent will say a couple of words. Okay, so where will PGIS go? Um, and it's like reading tea leaves a bit. I don't know, actually. It depends so much on, on, on funding, on, on, on politics, on what agencies say, and so on. So, but um, imagine that we would have some money available. So uh, what would we anticipate? Where would it go? So I would think that um, there will be an in increase in complexity uh, mapping and data integration will become more complex. We got 3D data, real, real 3D data, and we also got real 4D data. So uh, we need to go beyond this 2.5D or 2D plus 1D um, uh, level to, to, um, to develop our things further. Um, in terms of analysis, the, the, the part of real spatial analysis, spatial geostatistics geost um, and geostatistics in general, um, is quite poor at this moment if, if, uh, if one looks into, into the literature. So I guess there will be more targeted spatial analysis and data exploitation needed. Um, reference bodies are complicated in, 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 in planetary systems. They are not just two, two axes uh, that we're dealing with, but mostly three axes. The cartography of three, three, body, um, uh, um, three axis bodies. So, I guess there will be some developments coming up in the future with more flexibility to these reference systems, and there will hopefully be a feedback to the Earth community, actually. Uh, that would be great. Um, and collabor uh, collaborative platforms will be a topic, I guess. Uh, more tools for community mapping, and maybe, well, that would be really good funded, coordinated funded European efforts, but that has been topic since many years, actually. 
for many years and it hasn't happened until now. Um, so it would be great if there, there are new impulses. Um, and in terms of visualization, of course, uh, there will be new in innovative visualization platforms coming up in the future. Um, if money is available, of course, so that's the distribution, talking about spatial analysis, no, it's just a visualization of where our community comes from. It's not representative, actually. This is you, um, apart from the fact that China's not here, right? Uh, except for some of, yeah, okay. Um, but okay, uh, it's not representative because it's just a northern hemispheric view, obviously. Um, but okay, this is it. Um, and I think what PAGIS needs is really a contribution and developments from an active community, and this is why we are here together. And with that, I would like to conclude my talk. Thank you.